In this video, we are going to look at some different kinds of number theory type questions. And there's a real broad spectrum that number theory can include. So you'll just kind of see the types of problems we'll work on. And I might come up with additional videos related to number theory type problems. But these are, uh, I think I have four problems here that we'll take a look at. So the first problem, and I've seen this done in a variety of different ways, okay? So you might look at this problem and see a problem basically just like it, and you may not even recognize that they're the same type of problem. So as each of these clocks starts at 1, how many hours does it take until all three clocks are back at 1? Okay, so each hour that goes by, for example, in one hour, this first clock would go and point to 2. And so would this clock, come on, what are we doing here, board? There we go. And then this one would also point at 2. But eventually, after 4, when it gets to 5, after 5 hours, this clock is back at 1. And this clock would be at 5. And this clock would be at 5. So you can see they start to not stay at the same number. And so if we got to 10, well, this thing's already went through twice. This thing's almost went through twice. And this thing has finally went one full cycle. So how do we figure out how long it takes before changing colors all over the place here. How long is it going to take before all these clocks end up being the same time again? So we know this clock is going to shift every 10. 10? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Come on, come on, work with me here. So every nine hours. This one's every four hours it goes back. This one's every six. Now, what we're really doing with these numbers is we want to see what common number would they all eventually reach in the end. And if you think about what that really means, when would nine, four, and six all end up being and being a common type number? Well, that's just the least common multiple. So what's the least common multiple of nine, four, and six? Well, if you want to do it two at a time, we could say, all right, with 9 and 4, the least common multiple would be 36. And now what's the least common multiple of 6 and 36? Well, it would still be 36. So it's going to take 36 hours, quote unquote hours, because we're not really a real clock up here. But it would take 36 hours before all of these would hit 1 again. So that's one type of problem. All right, second type of problem that up. It says the product of 180 and a positive integer n is a perfect cubic number. What is the least possible value of n? So if we take 180 times some n value, we get a number that's a perfect cubic number, which means if you were to take the cube root of it, you would get a whole number. So let's say our perfect cubed number is something cubed. Okay, we don't know what this is, and we have no way of relating it to n, so we have to call it a completely new variable. Well, how on earth are we going to figure this out? we got two variables in here. Well, here's where we need to maybe look at, uh, look at an example. Okay, so let's, let me think of uh, a perfect cube we could work with. Uh, 216 would be an excellent one. 216 is really 6 cubed. Okay, now, and let's also look at 27 which is 3 cubed. We can take 27 and we can break it down prime factorization. No, what am I doing? That's a 9. And so there we get 3 cubed, right? We can get this prime number to a cube and 27 is a perfect cube. Now, watch what happens when we do prime factorization with 216. I don't want to divide with 6 because 6 isn't prime. So if I did, let's say, 3. Let's see, that'd be 72. I could do 3 again and get, let's see, 24. Do 3 again and get 8. Now i got to go 2, get 4, and 2, and 2, and 2, and 1. So finally, this is really 2 cubed. I have 3 2s, and I have 3 3s. So even though I can say 6 cubed, I could have really broken down that 6 into 2 and 3 and put cubes on them. Okay, hopefully that makes a little sense there. So we're looking for some number, either a singular number or a number that can be broken down into multiple primes. But 
regardless, all of those primes must have cubes to them. So, here's what we need to look at. Now let's go explore that 180. Let's break down 180, and let's see what it looks like in terms of prime factorization. Uh, well, I know 5 can go into 180, 36 times. I can get a 2 out of there, get 18, another 2, get 9, 3, 3, and 3, and 1. So 180 is nothing more than 2 squared times 3 squared times 5 to the first. Okay, so there's 180. Now, i got to have this other number in. And we just mentioned earlier that we can have multiple prime numbers, but they all need to be cubes. Well, none of my prime numbers, 2, 3, or 5, are cubes. I'm almost there with my squareds and not quite there with my first power of my 5. So if the n, how many powers of 2 would I need to combine with these two powers of 2 to make a cube? Well, I would need one power of 2. Because really, remember, we're just adding exponents when we're multiplying our bases. And I'd also need one power of 3 to get 1 plus 2 to get a power of 3. And then for 5s, I would need two 5s. So 1 plus that 2 makes that. So remember, this was all just 180 in the end. So let's figure out what this guy is, because that's what we need to figure out. What is the least possible value of n? So what is 2, really, times 3 times 5 squared, which is 25, 6 times 5, or 6 times 5, 6 times 25, well, that would be 150. And that is our least possible value of n, that when we multiply it by 180, we're going to get some perfect cube. So if I wanted just to double check real quick, what is 180 times 150? It is 180 times 150 makes 27,000. And if I were to take the cube root of 27,000, I would get 30. 30 would be that perfect cube that it would make. So sometimes breaking numbers down into their prime factorizations really, really comes in handy. All right, what is the largest prime divisor of every three-digit number with three identical non-zero digits? Well, three-digit numbers with three identical non-zero digits, well, that's like 111 and 222 and 333 all the way up to 999. So what is the largest prime number that can divide into every one of these? Well, hopefully, first glance, when you look at all these numbers, you can think of, well, hey, duh, 111 goes into all of these. But is 111 prime? Well, if I do my little trick with divisibility by 3s, I can see that 111 adds up to be 3, which is divisible by 3. So 111 is not a prime number. So then you might start thinking, well, shoot, now what are we going to look at? Now we got to find some other number, but not quite. Let's take the 111 and let's break it down. We know 3 can go into 111, but how many times? Well, let's see. 3 goes into 11 3 times with a remainder of 2, and 3 goes into 21 7 times. So 3 times 37 is 111. So if we had 111 and we broke it down into 3 and 37, well, 37 is a prime number. So guess what? This is our largest prime divisor. And you might think, well, we only really did that with the 111. What about with 999? Well, 999 is 111 times 9. And 111 can break down into 3 times 37. And 9 can break down into 3 times 3. Well, we only have two different prime numbers to work with here. 3 and 37. And which is the largest? 37. 37 will always end up being the largest whether you check 111 all the way up to 999. 